Praise the Lord. I want to wish all of you a happy new year. It's 2023 by the grace of Jehovah. Thank you so much for being with us throughout the year 2022. This is Moment of Truth coming your way from Mount Carmel Christian Concert Center. I am yours, Yusuf Yakubu Fise. I want to bless the Lord for a new year, a beautiful year, a promising year, a year of crucial decisions. Today's Moment of Truth will be focusing on the topic which is titled Understanding the Nature of the Will of God. Understanding the Nature of the Will of God. Jesus prayed and said, let thy will be done. And every Christian, every Muslim, every pagan will always say, that is the will of God. Let his will be established. We all know, when we talk about the will of God, we understand that that is what God wants. But understanding the nature of the will of God is a very crucial moment. And except we understand the nature of the will of God, we will sometimes, and in most cases, fumble. And so today we want to concentrate on analyzing the truth surrounding the will of God. How does it manifest? What is the color of the will of God? And the content, it's very important. And I'm sure by the time we go through this program this week, you will now begin to adjust. You'll begin to align with the will of God. Perfect. We want to take a little reading from Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 29, which is so popular, so common. And it says that my thoughts towards you are of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. So simple. That's the will of God. He says his thoughts towards us. It's of good and not of evil. God is never associated with evil. But there are so many things that happen which we need to understand whether they are actually will of God or not will of God. The will of God can be likened to a rose flower. There is no rose without thorns. We need to understand that the will of God is such a thorny issue that you handle it with care. Yes, you desire the will of God. You desire to, to, to have the will of God prevail over your marriage, over your businesses, over your progress in life. But how does it manifest? What are those things that accompany the will of God? And the few things we want to talk about, we can call them elements. Elements that accompany the will of God. And we must accept them. We must align with them. We must bear them. In order to fully get the will of God fulfilled in our lives. Number one, the will of God is good for all his children. Jeremiah eleven twenty nine, as we say, he says his thoughts towards us is of good and not of evil. God will not give his children bad gifts. For the word of God says that every good gift comes from above, from the Father of love. Every good gift. Whatever a man has that is good is always coming from God. And evil comes from the Father of evil. There's no doubt about it. And so we must understand this. If you're a child of God, the will of God for you, it's always benevolent. It's always good. Number two, the will of God is too deep to be understood completely. The will of God, it's like an ocean that is so deep. In Romans 11:33. And Psalms 92 verse 5, we hear the word of God saying, How great are your works. Your thoughts are unfathomable. They cannot be explained. 
no one single generation is able to explain totally the will of God. It's so deep, so wide. Just as His love is so wide and so deep, so deep that you cannot fathom it. You cannot dive deep to say, oh, I understand totally this is the will of God. So the second element of the will of God is that it is so deep that you cannot and I cannot claim to know it all. To know it all. Number three element. The will of God could take a very short time to manifest and it could take a very long time to manifest. The children of Israel stayed for 40 good years in the wilderness. Oh, can we say that the will of God was not for them to get to the promised land? That they be destroyed in the wilderness? Not at all. Our behavior towards what we see as the will of God will determine whether it's going to come fast or it's going to take some time. But we are taught that we must learn to wait upon him for his perfect will to be fulfilled. And so, it's not a microwave affair that you say, quickly, that's the will of God, let me have it. It could take you years. It could take you generations. It took the children of Israel some years to get into the promised land. But the good thought of God towards them was fulfilled at the end of it all. It started with Moses, but ended up with Joshua. You can't say, yeah, because I'm in the will of God. I will be at the beginning, I'll be in the middle of it, and I'll be at the end of it. No, it might not so be. God in his own perfect will might decide to use you at the beginning of an affair, or in the midpoint of it, or at the tail end of it. All is the will of God. And if it may take long time, the fourth element is we learn to wait upon God for his will to be fulfilled. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. When you wait upon the Lord, you renew your strength. You renew your strength. You renew your strength. When you wait upon God, you have your strength, your resources renewed in the mighty name of Jesus. And so the waiting time is one of the most important things in appreciating the will of God. And this is where most of us fail. We believe that once God is spoken, prophecy is given, it has to manifest immediately. And then we lose out. The will of God could take generations to be fulfilled. And it could be so short within a short time. But what we're encouraged to understand today is that we must go through the waiting period. The will of God in your marriage could take some time to be manifested. The will of God for a church to grow to maturity could take some time. We need to look at nature. You plant, you water, you nurture, you wait for it to grow up to the time of harvest. Yes, the will of God is that he gives seed to the soil. But when you plant, you must learn to wait. Good relationships are built based on persistence, consistency, ability to persevere and wait to harvest the fruits. Every attempt to do it in a quick way will culminate into disaster. Nations are built by waiting upon the Lord, by making sure that there's continuity. One government after the other, focusing on 
the end result. Number five element in understanding the will of God is that his will can break us in order to rebuild us. For our dear followers who were with us in the year 2022, you remember we said that God is the porter we are the clay. We said he can break us, he can grind us, sift us, filter us, and then remold us. The will of God can break you and break me, can humble you and humble me, and then will rework us so that we achieve that perfect image of God that he desires for us. This is another serious moment. When God is breaking us, we don't find it easy. And sometimes we can complain, we can murmur and say, oh, could this be God? Oh, yes. <laughs> he can be so tough sometimes. Those he loves, he chastises them. The fact that you're under suspension, the fact that you removed from your office to undergo some disciplinary action does not mean that the will of God for you is being thwarted. Not at all. It might be that process. Remember Joseph had a beautiful dream, a vision for other stars to bow before him, the moon and the sun. But look at from the house of Potiphar to the prison and then to the palace. I pray that the Lord will help you to understand the nature of the will of God and then key into it. The final element which I want to share with us today is his will can be likened to a current. A current. A current comes powerfully and anything that stands against it is pulled off, is washed away. The word of God says, that the Lord has placed a stone of offense in Zion. Don't try to collide with the will of God. His will is a powerful current. It's either you align with it or you give way. If you don't give way, he pulls you off. He uproots you. And then you'll be useless forever. In John chapter 3 verse 60, he says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. And in verse 17, he said, he did not come to condemn the world. He didn't. He's a current that can, if you align with him, he carries you alone, and you will no longer need efforts to be able to float. Powerful current, but beautiful one. Now, when John 3, 16 said, those who believe in him, what that means is those who align, those who key into the divine purpose of that current will be lifted up, will be promoted, will not be destroyed, will not be condemned. That's how the will of God operates. By way of summary, believing in him means that you have surrendered your life to him. You are saying, Jesus, take over my life. I've all along been in opposition, but today I come back as a prodigal child. I want to join you. I want to cooperate with you. I want to partnership with you. This is 2023. And I believe that in this year, everyone that will align with the perfect will of God, that will be able to persevere, that will surrender to him as the master, will be lifted up. You will be able to float in this year, 2023, without efforts. Struggles are gone away. The Lord wants to lift up his people. He wants to lift up nations that will put their trust in him. The word of God says, he says, by strength shall no man prevail. You have been struggling, swimming on against the current. But I come this new week to tell you that God loves you. Jesus loves you. He came so that you can align with him. To surrender your life to him so he takes over your burdens. This is the first week in the month of January 2023. I wish you all the best. And I pray that you will surrender your life to him. 
So you no longer have to toil. You no longer have to lose. You've for all along been a loser. But this time the champion, the master, builder, the one that is stronger than the stronger, he says he wants to take over your body. I want to pray with you. Father, I surrender all those who listen and follow this moment of true sermons into your hands. And I pray for them that this year, 2023, shall be the year of the establishment of the reinforcement of your perfect will for us all. Those who have never surrendered to you, Lord, have mercy on them. Help them to join you in swimming up together. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. Abide with us throughout this year and we'll be sharing with you gospel truth from the throne of God. The Lord bless you. This is Moment of Truth. Yusuf Yakubu Fise will always be there for you every week. Please subscribe to this platform so we can notify you. Thank you so much for being with us. God bless you. Shalom. Happy New Year.